How's everybody doing? I am back in St. Augustine. Sorry for this thing shaking. I just got it sitting on the driver's seat. I got the exact same load that I had last week, but grateful to have it heading out of Florida up to St. Augustine. Uh, no, I'm in St. Augustine going to Gainesville, but I do have to stop by the truck stop because I forgot my Oreo cookies, and we all know how serious that is. So hang tight. I'll get you guys uh, caught up on the, ro on the ride up to uh, Gainesville, which is about... 30 miles northeast of Atlanta. I should hit Atlanta outside of rush hour, but uh, the only thing I'm a little worried about is after I drop this load off where my next pickup is, but the great Tia will certainly take care of that. Atlanta is what Atlanta is. Nobody's got control of that. So anyway, we'll talk soon. Take care, folks. Hey fam, how's everybody doing? So I wanna just take a brief minute and show and kind of talk about what it's like to drive in traffic. Now, we all, every day we drive in traffic, we just get out there and we do what we have to do. But I'm gonna give you a little illustration of how important it is for me as a truck driver to make sure that I'm pay, taking very, uh, paying close attention to all of my surroundings. Now. You can see by the uh, what you see up here in the, the video that I'm driving through traffic. This happens to be Interstate 285 in Atlanta, Georgia. And this is a great representation of cities all over the country. It's a loop around the city. It's four or five lanes. A lot of people coming and going to work, from work, to the store, whatever the case may be. These people in the car don't stand a chance against my truck. So I want you to think about this. Average car weighing about 3,000 pounds, a lot of these cars, and my truck weighing 75 to 80,000 pounds. My truck is about 27 times heavier than that car. So if you would think about it, those people in the car really need to be careful. Well, that's not how it works. It's actually the other way around. I, as a truck driver and every other truck driver out there would probably agree that we have a greater responsibility. Now, that doesn't give license to people to cut us off and do all kinds of crazy stuff. You'll notice in this illustration that's taking place right now that there's no cars in front of me, but cars are constantly coming into that lane. And that's okay. That's their right. They're motorists. They have that lane. I, on the other hand, am trying to stay, based on my speed, three to three and a half seconds away from the car that's in front of me. And what's cool about it is there's tools inside the truck that let you know what that distance is, how far you are. I actually know how far in front of me the car is. Now, in these pictures that you're seeing, they're roughly 350 feet. I think I was going about 50, 55 miles an hour. So I need 300 to 350 feet of reaction time or reaction space. Well, the people that are out there driving cars going to and from work, what they're thinking is, I can get over in this lane and move up, I can get in this lane and move up. Another thing you'll notice is that I'm traveling one lane to the left of the far right lane. I'm one lane over. Now, in a perfect world, I should always be in that right lane. That's where, as a truck, I should be driving. But in a busy, busy city like Atlanta, Georgia, and many other cities out there, there are cars constantly coming off and getting off, coming on and getting off of the highway. So I want to make sure that I'm not involved in that so much. So I try to get one lane over until I get up to where I need to get in that right lane and I need to go. Now, when I change lanes, I've got to look through three mirrors. I just can't look at, you know, glance in a mirror. The other thing that I have to be cognizant of is what's going on around me at all times. I don't know if I'm allowed to mention this, but there's a company out there called Smith. I think it's Smith Driving, and I think they're awesome. I, I use their techniques all the time. I'm actually going to check with them and see if I can share some of that with you. 
uh, so you know what we're looking at. But one of the things that I always have to know, according to Smith, it's good sense, is what's going on way down the road. That's why I like to keep that long distance between myself and the other cars uh, that are out there driving on the road. I also need to always have a way out, so I need to know what's going on around me. So therefore, I just can't drive down the road and look at what's going ahead. I gotta check this, these three mirrors on this side, and I gotta check these three mirrors on this side constantly. I've got to always know what's going on. So just thought I'd give you a little update of what's going through my head as I drive through a busy area like Atlanta, Georgia. And also, as a driver, I feel like I have a greater responsibility. Um, I'm the commercial driver. I've gone to the extra training and everything else. So I want to make sure that I'm really on my P's and Q's, especially in traffic. I allow plenty of following distance between the car uh, that's ahead of me and myself. And if somebody in a car does something stupid, I need to be alert enough to manage my way around or through whatever they did that was stupid versus me getting all upset and going, that dumb driver, which I'm gonna think anyway. But I wanna make sure that I've got that out and that nobody gets hurt. Because as you saw in that illustration a minute ago, with the Coke can and the cinder block, there is no way that that car is gonna win and I've gotta take responsibility for that as much as I can or assume that I have that responsibility. Doesn't dismiss that other driver, that's why our trucks have cameras all over the place so that we can you know, really see what happened in an unfortunate incident. But the best thing that can happen is to never have an accident and always make sure that I'm preventing anything from happening. Thanks a lot, let's get on with the video. Morning, fam. How's everybody doing? I'm in uh, Commerce City, Georgia, and I'm at a place called Uber. It's one of my favorite places to go because they do most of the work for you. Um, we come, uh, it's usually uh, plywood or OSB board is what we get here. Now, take a look behind me. You can see the, you know, you can see the load. It's already prepped and uh, ready to go. Good news about these loads right here is that they put all the tarps on for you so that once I leave here, all I have to do, I don't know how that sun's doing, guys, sorry, but all I have to do is throw the straps over. Now, I really don't like throwing the straps over my tarps. I know the sun is brutal this morning, but when you throw the straps over the tarps, it actually uh, wears on the tarps, I mean, on the tarps a little bit. Tarps are good for about six months. I'm right at six months with this set, so it's pretty much time to get a new set. But you'll notice that there are 12 straps um, across the, the load, okay? You see there's 12 straps. No, you can't really see them all. There's 12 straps because there are four sets of uh, four by eight sheets of OSB board. So I have to have three on each. I think DOT requires two, but our company is DOT plus one. So uh, I have the three straps, and plus I'm more comfortable. And then in the very front of the load, you want to make sure you have what's called an X strap. And you can see that X strap on there now. Uh, that X strap ensures that that load doesn't shift forward. The other preventive measure that we take is there's dunnage. Dunnage is a four by four sheet that is up under the front, so it's on an angle. So it will kind of have to slide up. So that's what's going on with that. So. About to get out of here, head down to Jacksonville to uh, Builders First, and uh, talk to you guys along the way. 
So you can see these logs over to the left. Um, they take these logs, I, and I don't really know because I've, I've asked for a tour, but they won't let me because I'm too much of a nerd, I guess. But uh, these logs end up being OSB board, uh, which is probably under your feet right now if you're in a, in a wooden structure. Uh, ends up and the chips of it, they make plywood out of it some kind of way. I'm not really sure how that whole process takes place. Pretty fascinating though. So I have to wait here till the guy in front of me pulls off the scale. He just got his paperwork. So he's about to pull off the scale. I'll pull on. And there's all these log trucks coming in. And there's myself, another truck just like me. He's behind me. Alright, let's see if we can get this thing on the scale. So as I pull onto the scale, and I'll do this in another video, but I've got I've got six mirrors I'm scanning through because the last thing I want to do is ride up on those rails like I did once before. And I was even paying attention then, but I, obviously I wasn't paying attention enough. And man, that really hurt my pocket having to spend that 900 bucks. So I should be on the scale now. I'm rolling my window down just to peep at my front tires. And I am in a perfect position. So I'll let you guys go. We'll be right back. his mentality but it's always nice to get out and meet some of your trucks truck, truck driving it? buddies so once again I'm going to give him the opportunity to say hello hello now you see what I'm working with but it's back to the Waffle House my favorite place Good morning, fam. How's everybody doing this morning? I'm in Jacksonville, Florida, at the uh, Builders First Square off of Roosevelt, waiting uh, to get unloaded. Beautiful, beautiful morning. I'm right across from the Naval Air Station, so I get a kick out of coming here and watching the planes take off, but they're taking off in the opposite direction, so whenever they take off, all that, I don't know, what do you call it, sonic boom thrust, just kicks, kicks my tail. Beautiful, beautiful sunrise i don't know if you can see it back over there but uh man what a gorgeous sunrise probably one of my favorite things about this job is being able to get up and watch the watch the sun come up so if you look behind me here you can see that truck down there pulling in to get unloaded so that means i've got to uh, jump up into that next in line position so uh i'll keep you guys caught up on this and we'll talk soon
Thank you.